This is an update on some projects that I've already presented here. Uh, we'll start with the oldest one. About a year and a half ago, I showed you my radio, FM radio receiver project uh, that kind of got set aside for a while, and then Eddie and I uh, revived it and redesigned it. And uh, Eddie designed a circuit board, and we came up with the final design, hopefully, the, uh, on uh, <clears throat> last week, uh, Monday, last, last week, uh, I sent it, submitted it online uh, to this company in China, wanted 10 sample boards, and uh, the boards are 84 cents each and $20 shipping, and they got here yesterday, so seven days. So uh, there's the board, everyone seems to be interested in printed circuit boards. Uh, so it was for 10 sample boards, it was, there's a stack of 10, they came in seven days. So, that's the radio receiver project. Really quick here. Okay. Then there's the ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip. I showed you the board a couple of weeks ago. There it is. Um, at that time, I was using it for measuring voltage of batteries and solar panels. So, uh, uh, I've started another project. Brian and I are working on this. We had a meeting with a client today, this afternoon, about three hours talking about the product we're preparing for them using this board and a uh, temperature sensor. It's a uh, BME 280, uh, temperature, atmospheric pressure, and humidity. And there's the demo. It works great. I can plug it in and it'll just start sending data. So uh, I can pass that around if people want to see it. <coughs> okay. Humidity, what do you mean? Relative humidity. Okay. Okay. The third thing is, and that's why I want to plug in my computer. I've got a few pictures here. I haven't put it together into a slideshow. They're just pictures, so you've got to bear with me. Uh, so late last week, one of the radio stations that I uh, uh, helped maintain there we go. Had a problem. It, they went off the air. And Eddie and I drove out there, 65 miles one way. And when we got there, the, there was no power. And we determined that the reason there was no power was there were feathers growing out of the top of the transformer. <clears throat> so we notified the FAA that the tower lights were out and called the utility company or the tower company and and uh, a couple of days later, that was uh, rectified. And I went back out there. Uh, come on, pictures. I want to do these in order. I haven't organized them, so you're going to see them out of order. Uh, Does anyone know how to use Windows 10? Because apparently I don't. Can I ask you? All right. Upgrade to 7. I'm running 7 on all my other machines. But I wanted to have at least one. I don't know where anything went. Where the heck am I here? OK. So I went back out there. And um, the, there's the uh, feathers. And if you look, you can see the head of the, what used to be the head of the bird anyway, he's fried, okay? But the, the radio station. So um, this radio station 65 miles away. And I, uh, in order to put it back on the air, I needed to power cycle a piece of equipment. So to power cycle a piece of equipment, all I have to do is drive 65 miles, open the building, go inside, unplug, plug it in, and go home 65 miles. So there has to be a better way. So over the weekend, I took one of my Raspberry Pis, and I took some of my little relay boards, which I've showed you before on other projects, and I put together a little device. And 
And there it is all put together. It's an it's outlet strip, and inside is a Raspberry Pi and some relays. Pretty simple. Now there it is. OK, there, so there it is at the inside, the Raspberry Pi inside the relays. We've got one pair of outlets that are always powered. Then there's two that I can turn on and off uh, by logging into the computer and controlling them. The last two, I set it up so that um, the Raspberry Pi would check to see if the internet was present. And if it was present, everything's fine. If it wasn't there, it increment a counter. And a minute later, it would do it again. And a minute later, it would do it again. And if the count got up to 10 without the internet showing up, which would reset the counter, if the count gets up to 10, it turns off the modem, it turns off the router. Then it turns on the modem, waits a little while, turns on the router, and then checks to see if the internet's come back. I mean, the first thing that the tech support tells you when you call up your ISP is power cycle the modem. Well, for me to power cycle the modem, I have to drive 65 miles. <laughs> So now it does it automatically. And um, so there it is in the rack. Um, it, it was just a quick and dirty. I threw it together this weekend. I already had the power strip. The Ethernet cable's just coming out the front and plugs into the switch. Um, yeah, there's the dead bird. There's the back. The stuff is all plugged in. And I've got a little map on top that show, tells me what outlet does what. And that's it, that's the back of it, and there's my little chart. And, and that's what I did this weekend. That's it. That's Any questions? Yes. Uh, what, so, the, so the bird's dead, but what did that look like from the utility's perspective? Was there a fuse blown? Uh, it didn't look like the, I, I don't know, there was no power. Uh, there was one of those big ceramic things with the hooks that, you know, you see the guys grab with the fabric glass rods and pulls, but it looked like it was closed. So I don't know, but okay. I had no power. And um, about 15 hours later, power came back on. It was about 1.15 in the morning when power came back on. Squirrels can do that too. Any, anyone else? Okay. When are you going to sell the power strip? That's a great product idea. Uh, actually, I've been thinking about it. Uh, it that, that's a rather expensive power strip. Uh, but I was thinking of possibly uh, getting a small box with a duplex outlet and putting a, a pie or something like that in it and a couple of relays and you know one's for the router and one's for the modem and you know ethernet and plug it in and it'll just monitor your network and power cycle the router and modem when it needs to be done you can buy remote control outlet strips right now just go on amazon most of them though are have a usb uh jack and you plug them in and and uh you have to have a computer to control them but uh, I like the, the pie and the automatically checking to see if the network's there. That's a good way to do it. The pie has USB. Pardon me? The pie has USB. Yes, yeah, so what's the point? I wanted a computer that would, yeah, that, that I could do a W get and see if it returns a web page. If it yeah. didn't, then I assume that I don't have internet connection. No, I understand that, but the pie has USB, so it could control that outlet strip you're talking about. Yes, there you go. As opposed to using special purpose relays and maybe it's cheaper. I don't know. There. You had it on hand. It was this. Okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, this was this was stuff I had on hand, and I wanted to get it done because I got to make another 100, 130 mile round trip out there, so I wanted to have something to stick in the rack. Next victim. <laughs>